Hi, welcome to Julius Bar. Today we're gonna mix a Poor Star Martini. So, Poor Star Martini, it's the most martini that's not a martini ever. He has nothing to do with a martini. It was invented in 2002 in London by some guy called Douglas something, really famous apparently. And it's a super popular cocktail because he has porn in the name. I mean, what else? And today I'm gonna propose you at least two or three version of this cocktail because I'm gonna start from the one written on the back of this Passo liqueur bottle, which I'm gonna call the cheap porn star martini. It's gonna be made of Passoa, which is this, vanilla vodka and lemon juice. Ah, by the way, vanilla vodka, I don't have it. I'm just gonna mix some normal vodka with some vanilla extract. I mean, I'm not gonna buy vanilla vodka, really. It's like <laughs> my anathema. Uh, the opposite of what I stand for. I already bought this Passa, which I really doubt I'm gonna dig. So let's get down to it. Let's mix this cheap poster first. So the cheap poster call for 15 milliliters of lemon juice. They just look like a lemon that's gonna have 15 milliliters in one half. So I'm gonna squeeze it directly. Then we're gonna have vanilla vodka, 30 milliliters. I'm gonna use this Santori vodka, which is my standard go-to vodka because it's really neutral. And so I'm gonna put 30 milliliters of this normal vodka. Ooh, that was dangerous. And then I'm gonna add a drop of this vanilla extract. Yeah, I think there should be. It was a couple of drops. And then the recipe says 45 milliliter of Passo liqueur. It's a, oh my God, it smells like so fake passion fruit. It says it's made with natural passion fruit, but I don't know what's natural about this. Anyway, 45 milliliters of this stuff, which is really sweet, comes at 20% alcohol. He has a bright pink color, which is definitely not the color of the inside of a passion fruit. The passion fruit is red outside, but inside uh, the pulp is yellow. Yellow orange, so tell me what's natural about that. Anyway, this recipe is done. I uh, know it's going to taste like man, but let's put some ice in our shaker let's give this a shake let's double strain in our martini cocktail oh. A porn martini should be served with a side of champagne, like any good porn would require. And so let's get some cheap champagne. Our top shelf Kirkland Champagne Brut, which actually I never tried before, from Costco. What? better way to complete a cheap porn star than with a Costco champagne. Like seriously, in this moment. Wrong number. But here we have a Wait, let's top off a bit more. And there you go, a cheap porn star martini. Cheers.
I must say the vodka and the lemon juice tame down a bit the awfulness of the paso, which yeah, tastes like a fake imitation of passion fruit. But for being a, a really cheap version of this cocktail, it's relatively acceptable. Let's wash it down with some Costco champagne. Costco champagne is not the great. It's pretty sweet. It's brute, but um, yeah, I prefer my sparkling wines will they either be champagne or francia corta to be less sugary this is really easy and not that complex or interesting it's cheap champagne <laughs> but so now let's step up our game a bit just like this video where you see like amateur bartender pro something like that and we do a second version of this pasta martini and this time i'm gonna follow the default recipe and let's see if we can get any better result and for this version of uh, pasta martini we're gonna use some real passion fruits which are extremely rare and expensive here in Japan but I was able of importing some directly from the town of production and so they were not so insane expensive also here in Japan there is a program called Furusato Tax where basically you can use a part of the taxes you pay each year to get some products from some local production i guess it's a program done to support small towns in japan and so we got this passion fruits from this program and so basically they are free <laughs> so we're gonna put three halves or one and a half passion fruits pulp in our shaker then a sugar we could use some uh, simple syrup I don't have it as my usual I'm just gonna put some uh, powder sugar like uh, and as usual I'm gonna put a big teaspoon and then I'm gonna put half a lime, it's 15 milliliters of lime juice. And this is another one of those lime which really looks like just right, 15 milliliters. So I'm not gonna measure it. Just gonna make sure the powder sugar is dissolving correctly. And then because I'm not gonna use either vanilla sugar or vanilla vodka, which they will both be requirements, I'm gonna use two drops of vanilla extract. Maybe three. And uh, then we go on with 15 milliliters of Passoa. and 60 milliliters of vodka then we get some ice And then we are gonna pour it in our flanged coop. Here's a tip to double strain a cocktail like this that has a lot of pulp. 
I pass it into the smaller half of the Boston shaker. Then, instead of using the Oton strainer, I get the Julep strainer. That's gonna let more stuff, more pulp go through, but it's not gonna get stuck with pulp like the Oton strainer. And anyway, I'm gonna strain it another time with a fine strainer anyway. So I think this helps a bit with the pouring of the cocktail. As you can see, all the seeds anyway, they stop down there in my fine strainer and then I can just get the last drops of the juice and pop like this with the bartender spoon Ooh. and then we decorate with the half of the passion fruit that was left over Ooh. It's a really pretty decoration, but a completely useless one. I mean, you cannot eat it. We put our cheap Costco champagne on the side and we are done. Here is a Nover Pole Star Martini. Let's call it a normal Pole Star. Your average Pole Star Martini. Cheers. Can really appreciate the vanilla. I guess the third drop change up things a bit. The taste is more natural. It still retains a bit of fakiness from the Passoa. Let me do a direct comparison. The color is definitely more natural than this pink stuff here. Yeah. After trying the more natural Pond Star Martini made with some real passion fruit pulp the pink one the cheap porn star really tastes fake it's the cheesiest sweetest more simple cocktail but i must say it doesn't have the disgusting note of the sex on the beach that uh, the peach tree left me with but I think we can still improve on this by just not using vodka. I mean, like this is really light, it's really like nothing. It doesn't make you think, it doesn't make you consider anything you're drinking. You're just gonna flush it down, just taste like vanilla and nothing else. It's a pleasant drink, so I see how it can be popular, but not quite my cup of tea. Let's see if we can do a pro version a pro version, a Julio version, with a simple variation, which I think is pretty common because I mean, everybody must have tried by now. But let's just give it a shot and let me try a third version of this Ponstar Martini, which I'm gonna call Il Porno Star. Il Porno Star in Italian means a male porn star and it's gonna be called Il Porno Star in honor of the last song of the Sherlock masterpiece at Action Park. A great album by the Steve Albini led band. So for this third version, let's ban the vodka away. Let's also ban the Passoa. And let's introduce our guest of honor, which is gonna be Diplomatico Planas, rum, and uh, Fuji single grain whiskey. So let's start by squeezing half of a lime. Then I'm gonna fish out this half of a passion fruit. Don't want no go to waste. together with one more passion fruit pulp. So the amount of passion fruit pulp is the same as for the default recipe. Okay. Then as sugar, I'm gonna use some agave syrup, one dish. 
I'm gonna skip entirely the vanilla and instead I'm gonna put one teaspoon of this uh, Fuji single grain whiskey which has a lot of vanilla flavor. It would be like a bourbon made by Japanese Kirin. So let's put one teaspoon of this, maybe a bit more. Maybe that was a kind of lame spoon. It was not quite full. And then I'm gonna put 45 milliliters of our Diplomatico Planas, 47%. It's my favorite rum from the Diplomatico line. It's a clear rum, but it's aged six years and then it's a filter to make it look transparent. It's uh, really smooth and delicious, despite being 47%, uh, which is a respectable amount of alcohol. Then I'm gonna get some ice. Is a shake. Let's double strain our chilled coop. Okay, and let's give everything a try, starting from our latest entry, the Pro version, Il Porno Star. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Well, by reducing slightly the amount of uh, overall liquid because we had a tiny bit less volume of alcohol, no volume of liqueurs, but the alcohol stays pretty much the same. Actually, it might be a little bit more because instead of vanilla, we used uh, whiskey that tastes like vanilla. This is so much more intense on the flavor, despite not using the freaking passoire. This tastes all natural and freaking delicious. I'm gonna rinse my mouth with some cheap champagne. Boy, that's cheap. And then let's give a try again to the cheap poster. Oh boy, now that have the comparison, that's definitely a cheap poster. Let's try the normal standard. Standard, it's a bit more than standard because you use real passion fruits. Most uh, pornstar martini you will find around will use just some juice or puree of uh, passion fruit, not real passion fruit. Which I understand because I can make this cocktail just for like today basically, a week when I have this passion fruits. It's not gonna come back any other time during the year, at least here in uh, Japan. I guess if you're in some other places of the world, like tropical places, probably you can have it all year round. This is the most vanilla, like just the three dishes of uh, vanilla extract instead of two change uh, everything. Yeah, that's pretty powerful. They have uh, a lot more vanilla. This is decent doesn't give you any complexity it's really easy to drink really fruity at least it's less artificial than the first one well all the flavor comes basically from the passoa which is uh, yeah not my favorite let's say and then let's go back to il porno star oh this is a serious drink a good one I mean, this Diplomatico is excellent. The touch of uh, Fuji single grain really gives the touch of uh, vanilla, but without feeling like uh, a cheap vanilla. By using the vanilla flavor of the Fuji, which probably has the vanilla flavor coming from uh, oak barrels, this one tastes even better. A bit more intense, a good, beautiful orange color 
just a dash of agave syrup. This in the end is basically a variation of daikiri. It became a passion fruit daikiri, which is really good. It's really good. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, subscribe, comment down below. Shake yourself a drink and share with anybody you like. And in the end, do whatever you want. It's porn star season. No, it's summer. It's really hot. <laughs> and uh, I hope to see you next time. Cheers. So, about Il Porno Star, I said it's uh, named after a Sherlock song, and I did see Sherlock live, and in my previous career I was a electronic guitar pedal maker. I made some uh, effects pedal for guitar. And so I managed to meet a few of my idols, and one was Steve Albini, which I managed to take a picture with. Steve Albini talked to me a bit after a concert. He was extremely gracious. The concert was great. Sherlock, they played the Crow, they played the Squirrel song, my favorite songs. And I guess I was the most headbanging person in the crowd. And uh, he, was, he was really nice. He was a nice guy. He is really sharp online when he, whenever he gives the interview. He has really sharp opinions. But when he meets uh, his fans, he is a really, really nice guy. I, I really like Steve Albini. I discovered him as most people from In Utero by Nirvana which uh, I don't know I heard the neutral and I was like oh my god this sounds this drum sound like insane it sounds so great sound like you're in the room you're listening to the drums in the room and it was produced by Steve Albini and then I went down the rabbit hole and I searched all the Steve Albini stuff like uh, high on fire what's the black Black something, it's the name of a really good High on Fire album produced by Steve Albini. And guess what? High on Fire then went to produce their album with Kurt Ballou, which I also managed to meet. And uh, actually, I spent an afternoon with Kurt Ballou. He was uh, also a really nice guy, extremely smart, and uh, he may be the best indie noise heavy producer nowadays. So basically by having met both Steve Albini and Kurt Ballou, I met all my idol producers. And that's about it. Gonna finish this.